Hey y'all, so in today's video, I'll be showing you how I create my stencils for my larger than matte signs. So I'm gonna go over to the Cricut Design Space and show you how I get started. So the first thing you'll need to do is of course, just type out and create your design that you want to use. So once you have all the fonts and it's set up how you want it to display on your sign, you'll just grab all of it by drawing a box over top of the entire project and then welding it. And then what I usually do next is open up one of the shapes. I usually use a square, obviously, if I have a square sign or a rectangle or a circle, just depending on whatever the shape of the sign is that I'm using. And I make that shape the size of my actual sign in my design space. So once you have that shape drawn out to the size of your actual project, I grab my design that I created and I'll lay that over top of it. And you may have to go in and arrange the layers. So just go up to the top and click bring forward or push backwards. So now I can place my text over top of that shape and adjust it as I need to. So this just gives you an idea of how this is gonna lay out on the sign of the spacing that you need to do of how big you actually need to make your design. So my next step is to make a 11.5 by 11.5 box. And I say 11.5 because sometimes I have trouble with Cricut saying that if you put it exactly at 12, that it doesn't fit the map. So once you have your 11.5 square, you can make a couple just depending on how many you may need. So you'll bring that 11.5 box over top of your design and just try to line it up best you can to where it does not completely just slice right in the middle of a letter. What I try to do with this is just try to have it lined up where there's spacing in between lettering. I try not to slice this right along the lettering because that does tend to make it a little more difficult when it comes to piecing it together later on. Because what we're gonna do with, with the 11.5 box is we're just gonna grab both of these, the design and that 11.5 box, select those two together, and you're gonna go down and hit slice. So you'll get rid of the overlayer, and then there's gonna be another layer that you can delete, and then it'll leave the original design piece that you'll need. So you'll drag that to the side, and this process will repeat until we get all of our pieces. Now, depending on the size of your sign and the size of your design, you may have to cut a whole lot of pieces, or you may be able to get away with cutting smaller pieces. It just all depends on the size of your design, the size of your sign, and all of that. And once you click on Make It, you'll see that it jumbles all the pieces together onto your 12 by 12 map. And what you'll need to do next is just make sure that none of them are overlapping and that there's space in between them. So when you go to cut them later, you're leaving yourself some space to do so. So here are my two pieces. This one I started weeding. I haven't finished yet and I haven't even started on weeding this one, but I just wanted to show you these are my two 12 by 12 sheets here that I'm going to weed out, put my transfer tape on, and we're going to separate and then piece all together onto our large sign. So I have my big board under here that I'm going to use for this project and here are my two 12 by 12 sheets with my pieces all together still. And I have my Cricut cutter right here. You can just use a pair of scissors. Normally I will just use my scissors because I usually leave this downstairs, but this does help just cut a nice clean line along where you need it to be instead of it being potentially, you know, not straight. But you can use a pair of scissors, especially if you use grid or if you have this type of vinyl where it does have the grid on the back side and you can just try to hold it up to the light and just see where you need to cut along to. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut these into their own individual pieces. And this is where I meant to just leave space for you to be able to cut through. So this right here is where I need to cut along and it's just enough space for me to cut these two pieces um, apart. So like that, these two go together. It's never leave and I love right here. So these go together just like this. So I just gotta get my space in right on this. So I need to cut a little bit off of my green here just so this edge, because I did this kind of crooked, my grid here, so it's kind of messing up the layout of this. So we're just going to get this lined up, cut off a small, small bit of the green just so that doesn't get in the way, and that extra transfer tape. So this little bit I needed to cut off to get out of my way. 
Now we have that clean edge here to piece this together and I'm just gonna have to cut off my yellow nail. And I save these pieces because these are the pieces that I use if there are any gaps or anything then I use those to hold this together. I also use the transfer tape pieces off of this to stick on here and I'll show you that in a little bit but do hold on to these little scrap pieces. So I start with piece by piece. So I just try to look at how the letters are and try to line the letters up best that I can. This is the most trickiest part of it. So once you believe you have it all lined up, you can go ahead and add you another piece of transfer tape just to hold your position on that. So now this is one and you can hold it up to try to get a better view of it and make sure everything looks straight. We're gonna move on to the next part. Now I had it to where it overlaps, so there is no gaps here, but what I meant as far as keeping these to use to fill gaps, because that's usually what happens with like stove covers that I make and things, just depending on the complexity of your project. You may need to fill in gaps or pieces where your stencil is not um, covering up so that you don't end up painting onto your board. So like if there was a gap right here, I would need to take this and just cut a very thin little piece what I normally do, just cut a piece just like this, and then I would take that and place it right between and fill that gap up, just so when you go to paint over your stencil, you don't end up painting right into this crease, right onto your sign, and messing up your sign. So I do suggest doing that. Another use for these is if your stencil, you cut right along the line. Like right here, I cut right along the wording. So when I go to paint my stencil, I potentially can run into painting right over onto my wood sign. So I take an extra piece and just place it right above it to make sure that I don't do that, just to give me that extra piece of vinyl just in the way so that I can just paint freely and I don't have to worry about it getting onto the sign. So you'll just peel that up and you'll have your clean lines, everything will be good to go. So now I'm just gonna remove all of the paper backing. Okay, so the next tricky part is just placing this big stencil onto your sign and making sure it's straight and all of that. So what I'm going to do is going to take it off of camera, but what I normally do is I try to get it lined up best I can and then I turn it straight up so that I can look at it straight on and try to get a good view of it and see what I think. So once you do have all of this placed on here for what you think is correct or is lined up the, to the best of your ability, I do take a measuring, my measuring tape and I just check the spacing on the ends to make sure it's about the same and the same with like the lettering, like I have the E's here and I'm just going to check to see if they are about the same, which these two are, because that kind of gives you an idea of how off it is as far as from top to bottom or side to side. And that kind of helps guide you on whether or not your design is straight or not. So now that all that is placed, I'm gonna start removing all of my transfer tape now as well. So I start with just the pieces that I use to hold them together. Another tip is try not to press on your stencil in the areas that you're not painting. Like this area, this area, in between here, because you're risking, if you really like just, you know, squeegee the entire thing, then you're risking it ripping up your paint or ripping up your wood or anything in these places where it is no design, where it is no need for it to really be grabbing onto the wood. You really want it to grab onto the wood in these areas where you're gonna be painting at so that you can get those crisp lines. So now that I have it all pressed down, I'm going to take my extra pieces and just cover any of these spots that I think 
I could potentially paint onto by mistake when I go to paint on my stencil. So I'm just covering all that, just giving it an extra space. So I'm just taking a regular paintbrush and I'm just going to paint over top of my stencil. So now that it's completely painted, we're going to let this dry because you don't want to be peeling up your stencil while it's still wet and get it on your fingers and potentially make a mess onto your other parts of your sign. So now that it has dried, we can remove our stencil. So it looks like it did bleed under quite a few of these letters where the board was kind of rough. So that's no big deal though. We can still go back and touch up those spots. So now that we have the stencil removed, we can touch up all of this bleeding right here. So what I use for touching up to just make things a whole lot easier is paint pens, or you can just use a regular paintbrush and go right along it. I just find it easier just to kind of write it with my hand than to try to be steady and do a clean line. So I just make it a little more bold by going outside of the area where it bled at and just fill it in. So what I do is just go a little bit further outside make it a little bit more bold just to clear up those bleed marks. It just really depends on how far out it bled on how much more bold I go with it just to fill it in. And I'll just go right along that, just like that. And as far as your paint bleeding like this, it really just depends on the type of wood that you're using. If the wood is really rough, I will show you what I mean by rough. Like this has indentions all in it. And of course the vinyl will not lay right into those tiny crevices so because of that it bleeds right into those spots so but sometimes you just can't prevent it sometimes it happens no matter what you try to do so don't get frustrated with it just try to find um, alternatives to fixing it and just touching it up if you can i just did a sign just like this this exact sign like a week ago and it did not bleed at all so that is you know, sometimes it's just going to happen. So here is the completed sign. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know down in the comments below if I left off anything or if there's anything else that you need me to cover on this. My next video will show you how I ship signs like this. So I will see you guys on the next video.